The case of a Czech trained doctor who managed to practice in Australia and New Zealand for 12 years despite a long history of alcohol abuse and a jail term for domestic violence has raised serious concerns about the ability of the medical profession to keep a check on their own colleagues. Dr Roman Hazel is now deregistered in both countries after a public inquiry in New Zealand this year revealed he had botched up to 25% of all his sterilisation procedures on women, resulting in six patients falling pregnant. Many more patients in Australia have now come forward to complain about Dr Hazel, prompting two further inquiries in New South Wales and Queensland where he had practised or continued to practise until February this year. Deborah Cornwall reports. He smelt awful and he sneered at me and he was laughing, calling me slut, whore, Australian woman, Australian bitch. If they feel that they are unhappy, I would like to apologise because it was never any intention from my side to do wrong things. It's five years since Connie Scholl gave birth to her first child at the Lismore Base Hospital in northern New South Wales. Suffering second degree tears, she'd been left to the care of Dr Roman Hazel, a gynaecologist trained in the Czech Republic who'd been refused registration in Tasmania and South Australia, but the New South Wales Medical Board still deemed him fit to practice as a junior physician. When he first walked in to, to ditch me, you know, stir up the bitch. Connie Scholl said Dr Hazel had proceeded to suture her without anaesthetic. Her pain so excruciating, she kicked him. He was so angry and I just froze in fear. And he, um, he came between my legs as close to me as possible and he spat at me as he rammed his hand into my crutch and pressed his finger into me. And he said, who's the boss now? It's not that people weren't aware, it's just that the information wasn't passed on. Oh, OK, sorry. Connie Scholl did make a formal complaint about Dr Hazel, but it wasn't until two months ago the hospital finally responded. End of June, early July, I think it was, that the, the executives from the hospital came to my home and personally apologised for their lack of dealing with my complaint. By then, Dr Hazel had already left the Lismore Base Hospital under a cloud, over claims he'd rorted his timesheets. He did find work at a Melbourne hospital, but was sacked after just one week for drinking. The New South Wales Medical Board ordered a psychiatric report at the time, which found Dr Hazel was still fit to practice. He then headed to New Zealand, where the system finally caught up with him. Roman Hassel, unemployed doctor, disgraced when he botched eight sterilisation procedures on Wanganui women. A report by the New Zealand Health and Disability Commissioner in February found there'd been concerns about Dr Hazel from the time he'd arrived at the small country hospital in Wanganui in August 2005. A right historical fiasco. No excuses for it, not good enough. After just 12 months, Dr Hazel had bungled one in every four sterilisation procedures he'd performed on women, resulting in six of his patients falling pregnant and another woman having her healthy ovaries removed. When I am looking now back, the situation escalates about in the last two, three years and went out of the control. Dr Hazel's fall from grace has finally landed him here at a homeless shelter in Sydney. But despite his claims of contrition, he now says he's also a victim of sorts and blames the medical profession for covering for him when he needed help. That's actually damaged me more because till I get a little bit inside in this problem, I look at my colleagues or people surrounding me, everything seems it's fine, you are okay. Former Health Complaints Commissioner Marilyn Walton says Dr Hazel's case demonstrates the huge resistance among doctors to report colleagues who have a problem. The culture that doesn't put 
first patient interests. It still is locked into this perception that they must protect the profession's reputation. As of this month, doctors in New South Wales will be compelled to inform medical authorities of any concerns they have about a colleague. Well, it's a sad reflection that we are requiring doctors by law to report because really it's an ethical obligation. Dr Hazel's two ex-wives say his whole career has been marked by drinking, thieving and violent behaviour and it's taken two decades to catch up with him. In the mid-90s, he was sacked from a major teaching hospital in Bratislava, Slovakia for alcohol abuse, then later jailed for a month in Singapore for threatening his second wife, Rose Doyle, with a knife. He had my 12-inch long um, carving knife and said, I will kill you and cut you up into little pieces and nobody will find you and I will sell your ovaries on the black market. Dr Hazel's third wife, Sally, says his alcoholic binging continued when he started working in Australia in 1997. He was forced to resign from the Royal Hobart Hospital in Tasmania twice, first for drinking, then a year later he was deregistered by the local medical council after they discovered he'd failed to tell them about his conviction. But that didn't stop him from being registered in New South Wales. I was absolutely shocked. All other states rejected him. I think the primary issue here is how this doctor was employed in the first place. Marilyn Walton says until such time as there's a national register that tracks a doctor's work history, incompetent and dangerous practitioners will continue to slip through the net. In Australia, we don't have a system in place that we know the history of every health professional. Their medical negligence claims, their proven disciplinary matters, their criminal convictions. Since the New Zealand inquiry, another 10 serious complaints have been lodged against Dr Hazel from patients at Lismore Base Hospital. But for now at least, he's been barred from practising anywhere in Australia. Do you think you'll ever be fit to practise again? I will leave these questions open. What I can say at this moment, I am not fit and I don't consider this option, but I don't know what the future will bring. Well, I think he needs to be stopped somehow because not only on a professional level, but on a personal level too. I mean, he's a dangerous man. Both the New South Wales Board, a Medical Board and the state's Australian Medical Association declined to be interviewed for tonight's program, citing the current investigation into Dr Hazel by the New South Wales Healthcare Complaints Commission. Deborah Cornwall with that report and that's the program for tonight. We'll be back at the same time tomorrow, but for now, good night.